Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Political Insider. I'm Brett Smith, your humble host. Joining me today is a very special guest and a good friend, DOD presidential appointee, best-selling author, and host of America First on Salem Radio, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Welcome, Seb. Hey, Brett. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. You've been a huge Trump supporter, and you've stuck by him through all this. And, um, you know, our viewers want to know, can do you think Trump can still win this? He can. And uh, when I spoke to him two weeks ago, I told him that he has to fight the legal battles in the courts to their fullest extent, hopefully all the way to the Supreme Court. But this is really a battle that has to be won politically. If you look at uh, the incredible time crunch that the Electoral College is going to meet in a couple of weeks, then uh, first week of January, the votes have to be tallied in Congress from the Electoral College votes, that really doesn't give you any time to create the, uh, the legal cases that have to be created. Uh, this has to be done politically. Uh, what do I mean by that? The key states in which the election was incredibly suspiciously handled. Remember, in, in four battleground states, they, the president was winning. They stopped counting votes and then Six hours later or the next day, they found hundreds of thousands of ballots for Joe Biden. Every single one of those states where this incredibly suspicious activity occurred has state houses which are GOP controlled. The governorships, the chief clerk or the secretary of state may be in the hands of the Democrats, but the state houses are GOP state houses. And according to the U.S. Constitution, it's not the governor, it's not the local election officials that decide how a president is elected, it is actually the state houses. And in many cases, including Pennsylvania, the way that the election is run was illegally and unconstitutionally changed um, without the consent of the, the state houses. And as such, uh, it is beholden upon them not to certify these elections, not to choose the slate of electors, and not to send those electoral college votes to DC in January. If that case, if that is what happens, then we have the genius uh, solution, the scenario, which is how Thomas Jefferson was actually elected of the contingent election. If, if neither candidate, if, if sleepy, creepy Be Beijing Biden doesn't get 270 votes in the electoral college, if the president isn't elected, uh, isn't reelected by the electoral college, it is the House of Representatives that elects the president and it's not by members, it is by states. And right now the GOP has the majority of state delegates in the House and as such, the president could be reelected. So for me, it's about rallies. It's about putting political pressure on these GOP state houses not to certify these clearly fraudulent elections. If that happens, he gets a second term. Well, we've got, uh, you know, my governor, uh, Doug Ducey, certifying Arizona's results today. Uh, you know, you know, wow, Rudy and Jenna Ellis and others are presenting, you know, really overwhelming evidence, some pretty shocking stuff today. You know, why are Republicans like Ducey and others basically screwing over our president? Because they still remarkably, four years later, really don't understand what happened in 2016. Let, let's just remind everybody, because we forget this. Four years ago, something happened in America that we have never done, not since the Revolutionary War, ever since George Washington, right up until Barack Obama. Every single one of our presidents, all 44 of them, were, were members of the swamp. They were part of the quote-unquote political elite. They were either former governors, congressmen, or senators, or retired generals like Eisenhower. For the first time ever in the history of the Republic four years ago, the American people chose somebody who wasn't a member of the swamp, wasn't a member of the quote unquote political elite. And, and that is a very clear message from the American people that both sides of the aisle Republican and Democrat had betrayed the American people, what the president called the forget, forgotten men and women of America. And I said this when I was in the White House. I said this after I left the White House. Donald Trump won the election in 2016, despite the GOP, not, not thanks to the GOP. So people like Ducey 
are idiots. They're morons. They, they don't understand that today's conservative movement is Donald Trump's. The yeah. Paul Ryans, the, the, the Mitt Romneys have been completely rejected by the American people. The establishment GOP is gone. It's dead. It has ceased to be. Now uh, they have to wake up and smell the coffee grinds. And whether he's in the Oval Office or whether he's left the Oval Office, the GOP is now about national populism. It's about defending our borders. It's about taking on China. It's about being proud for America. It's about crushing ISIS. And people I do see, they have no idea what happened four years ago. Yeah. It, it, it's really sad. It's really disappointing today. Uh, and, and I think it was really bad optics as well when you've got Ducey and, you know, the, the, our secretary of state who's called all of us Trump voters Nazis, um, you know, basically sealing the deal, uh, you know, for now. Um, so, you know, what, something else that's kind of puzzling to me, you know, and getting back to, to just going into 2020, do you think President Trump was prepared for this amount of voter fraud that we're seeing? You know, we, we always hear trust the plan. And whatnot, and I and I, I'm one of these guys. I've read Art of the Deal. I'm familiar with with President Trump's philosophy. I just can't see him going into 2020 not being prepared. What What do you think? Well, look, he, he warned us. He warned us months in advance. He yeah. was the the lone voice in the wilderness saying, "You you can't do mail in ballots. You can't you can't send out 80 million unbidden, unrequested mail in ballots." and not expect there to be massive fraud. We, we've seen the cases in, in Arizona, yeah. 9,000 people voted in the Arizona elections who'd moved out of Arizona. We've seen you know, dead people vote. We've seen minors vote. We've had reports, signed affidavits, of people receiving multiple, between four, five, six voting ballots for the same person. So the, so the president knew because, hey, this, this is a man who's driven by common sense, and he understood you can't do this without it being a massive potential for fraud. Now, was he, was he ready operationally? It's, it, that's the wrong question. You know, he may be the most powerful man in the world, but he is the president. The job of preventing that isn't his. I mean, you know, he's got a few things on his plate. That is the GOP's responsibility. And my question is, where was the GOP? When, when you had, you know, Pennsylvania, Virginia, all kinds of uh, states and commonwealths say, well, we're going to send these out. There's going to be no signature verification. You can send it in on postmark. We'll be counting it weeks after the election. Well, guess what? The GOP should have had its poll watchers in those election stations weeks in advance. I don't care if they're sleeping you know, in a sleeping bag on, a, on an army cot. They should have been there instead of after the election waving their court mandated order to be allowed into the polling station as they are locked out of the polling station as we saw you know you can watch the video of, of that happening yeah. in philadelphia so the president knew the issue isn't the president the issue is the institutional gop being caught with its pants down yeah yeah that's, that's a really good point i mean the president can't do it all and frankly I, I just don't see the gop backing him up and 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 we're kind of seeing that in 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 all these swing states to a large degree um, let me ask about some other things we keep seeing from President Trump supporters and from his Twitter feed. Um, the Kraken, you know, what is it? Uh, is it related? <laughs> is it possibly related to a DOD cybersecurity program? Lynn Wood made that claim on Twitter and Trump retweeted it. And it's got a lot of people puzzled. So I, I find this very, very amusing because back in... I think it was April. You can, you, you can go and check my Instagram feed or my Twitter feed. I'm the first person in American politics who used the phrase Kraken, and that's because I'm a movie buff, yep. and uh, I was referring to the great Ray Harryhausen's uh, movie, Clash of the Titans, and the release, the Kraken. So mm -hmm. it was me with reference to the investigations being done into Russian collusion that made a short video. It was, it was standing outside of my house late at night. I had a, a black T-shirt on, and I made a video, and I said, you know, be ready, the Kraken is about to be released. What you're reading now, what you're hearing now is garbage. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is a con. This is like all that, you know, insane QAnon snake oil 
there is no Kraken unit. There was no SF raid in Germany against the CIA location where servers were being housed. If anybody believes that, you are smoking crack. You know, the idea that, you know, there's, there's military action occurring on the soil of a NATO ally and nobody knows about it except two journalists nobody's heard of and a retired Air Force general who's been out of the picture for 20 years. Guys, I worked in military information operations. Uh, my company advised the Marine Corps for three years on those operations. I still teach for Bragg, for the MISO PSYOP guys in, in Fort Bragg. So let me tell you, somebody who knows this sector and knows the units that operate there, it is all, I'll mind my language, garbage, yeah. utter complete garbage. And let me be clear here. Anybody who believes the, you know, um, Mueller, was really working for President Trump. And there are thousands of sealed indictments about international pedo rings, and they're all going to be arrested. It's all grifters. It's people who are making money by lying to you. Or, oh, and this is the really, really vicious thing. This is, this is why it makes me so angry. And on my show today on America First, I, I, I um, dedicated a, a whole segment to this. All of these asinine conspiracy theories are really designed to do one thing, Brett. They're designed to make patriots like you and your viewers sit on your hiney and do nothing. If you buy into the, oh, it's okay. The president has this secret watermark on, on the, the ballot. I remember that. <laughs> and it's like, guys, I mean, have you read the bloody constitution? The states yeah. run elections, even for federal offices like president. There is no one ballot form in America. Every state prints them separately. So people, either you're dumb or you're buying into something which allows you to have no responsibility because then you'll sit back and say, hey, he's got it. Don't worry. There's thousands of No, That's, that's and, a good point. You know, it's, it's meant to demobilize patriots. It's meant to make you think, hey, don't worry about it. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to put on my red MAGA hat. I don't have to go out there and demonstrate. I don't have to support the president uh, with my actions on the streets of America. These are all grifters, propagandists, mental cases, or people who want you not to support the president. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's a great point. Um, you, you know, and again, it gets back to, I think, um, you know, we, we've got to stay in this fight, frankly. And, you know, you know, I've been thinking about Georgia quite a bit. And, and let's swing back around to that. What can our viewers do? Um, you know, you, you always talk about holding the line. You know, you know, what can we do as far as Georgia and some of these swing states, Arizona? You know, what's next? And, and what can we do to help? You know, because frankly, as long as President Trump is in this fight, I believe all of us should stay in this fight. You know, well, I, I, I'm not interested there's, there's... in conceding. Well, absolutely. And this will be a fight after he's left the White House, well, whenever that is. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, what can you do? I, I'm very clear on my show, and I think I say it every single day. I don't care if you live in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, or Nevada, uh, wherever you live, even if it's not in a contested battleground state, if you don't get your MAGA on now, then you're never going to get it on. If you're not out there self-organizing, don't ask me what you should be doing. Get 10 of your friends get on an email chain, organize, get out there, whether it's outside the local election office, whether it's outside the headquarters for the state secretary, whether it's outside the state house, or whether it's like, you know, the ladies who, you know, ring up to my show every Friday and say they're on Pacific Coast Highway and Wilshire Boulevard every Friday, six o'clock, uh, you know, California with their MAGA hats, with their stars and stripes to, to, to support the president, wherever you are, you should be sending a message. The left is always organized. They're like drones. It's like the Borg. We need to organize. Also, you need to put political pressure. Don't, seriously, you, you, you want the president to do everything? What has he done for you for the last four years from building the wall, crushing ISIS, taking on China, taking on COVID? It's time for you to do something for the president. So get organized. Call, write, email your state house, your state rep, your chief clerk, your secretary of state, and let them feel the heat and tell them very simply one message, Brett. If they dare to certify these massively transparently fraudulent elections, they will never, 
ever again be reelected. You've got to put the fear of God into them politically and understand that if you are a yellow-bellied coward and you certify elections where we saw we saw in Pennsylvania that, that hearing where that former military intelligence officer said, you know, I'm a forensic specialist today, and I saw suddenly electronically 600,000 votes be added to Biden's tally and 3,000 for the president. Excuse me? Yeah. When, when you see, there's no way on God's green earth that suddenly you find a, a, a dump of votes where there are 96% of the votes go to one candidate and 4% go to the incumbent president. That is a fraudulent election. And everybody who has to certify it must be sent a message by your viewers. You dare certify that and you will never, ever be reelected to whatever office you're in. That's what was so shocking watching the Arizona coverage today, which is still going on right now. They have a function within this Dominion voting system that allows weighted votes. So they were, they were literally talking about how votes were literally being switched from Trump to Biden. Um, and they're also calculating these votes as fractions and with decimal points as opposed to one person, one vote. And you can use that as far as a metric to weight towards one candidate. I mean, I, I was shocked today watching this stuff because it was very similar to what we heard out of Philadelphia and it's happening here in Arizona, which, you know, I'm third generation, man. I, this has always been a red state and it's just kind of shocking to me what's happening and how the, the culture uh, within Maricopa County and even just across the state is completely changing. And, and it's, just, it, it's just completely bizarre to me and sort of came out of nowhere, to, to be honest. Well, not really. I mean, if you read my book, uh, The War for America's Soul, everything that we're witnessing in America today, whether it's trying to turn, you know, Texas Democrat, whether it's trying to mm. pack the Supreme Court, n none of this happened overnight. And, and even, you know, those who say it was Obama. No, it wasn't eight years of Obama. This is the new left. You need to educate yourselves. This has been going on for more than 80 years. If you want to understand it, read chapter three of my book, uh, The War for America's Soul. Re read the incredible, read chapter six. One of the most important things you can do in your life is read chapter six of Andrew Breitbart's, uh, the late Andrew Breitbart's uh, autobiography, yeah. Righteous Indignation. There, 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 there has been a plan. The left has a plan. They, they realized that a, a crippled Italian communist sitting in a prison cell in Italy in the 1920s, realized that communism never works unless it is initiated in a backward agrarian society mm -hmm. like China or, or like Russia. In advanced Western societies that have strong Judeo-Christian principles and have a strong middle class, you know, Marxist revolution just doesn't happen. So what did he do? He sat down and he wrote the playbook. And he said, and this is this you know, translated all the way through to Adorno, Marcuse, and eventually Alinsky, and then Obama, who just was an acolyte. These, uh, these, the, the new left realized, if you want to take on a robust Western civilization, you don't do it frontally. You don't try and have a Maoist revolution you know, on, on, the, on the barricades. You infiltrate that society. It's called the long march through the institutions. Mm -hmm. yep. You become, this is, this is the weather underground. This is Bernadine Dawn Belez. You become high school teachers. You become college professors. You become film directors. You, you, you take over the media. And guess what? We let them. I mean, people always are. I travel the country. I give speeches. I, I boost for the president. People say, how, how did we get here that in the year 2019, the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation does a survey and finds that 72% of millennial Americans would prefer to live in a socialist or communist America after that ideology killed 100 million people. People say, well, well, how did we get here? Well, guess what? You want an answer? Look in the bloody mirror is how we got here. Yeah, we, we did nothing. When, when, when Bernadine Dorn and Bill Ayers, Bill Ayers, you know, Weather Underground, SDS, actual real terrorists, I don't mean Al-Qaeda, I mean white entitled terrorists that blew up IEDs at the Pentagon and at, at the State Department in the 1970s, when they, when we allow them to become tenured professors in Chicago, well, guess what? You're going to breed two, three generations of totally indoctrinated idiots like AOC. 
and, and, and the conservatives sit back and do nothing. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, Andrew Breitbart nailed it. Politics is downstream from culture. And what did we do with the culture? We just... We abandoned it. We abandoned it. I mean, you know better than anybody. We, you're, you're, we, right, you're right there in the culture. You know it, Brett. Yeah. No, we ceded the culture war to the left. And uh, you're, you're talking about Gromsky and the Long March Through Culture, which I encourage all of our viewers to check out, as well as Yuri uh, Bresmanov, who in 84 yes. predicted all this stuff. X -K, you know, uh, uh, KG, X KGB, who defected, talked about how it's going to be it's going to be political subversion. It's going to be, uh, you know, they're going to take everything that we value and subvert it from within. This is also Khrushchev to uh, Nixon when he was VP. We're, we're going to take down America without firing a shot. Right. Um, this, this is, you know, the sad part is it's all been telegraphed. And, and the right really has kind of sat by and allowed these institutions, whether it's big tech, media, entertainment, or education, to get culturally subverted by leftists. Let, and let we, and an we wonder why we're at. <laughs> so let me give you an example. We, we had General Flynn on our show today. It was the first public um, interview he gave nationally since, since the president pardoned him. And um, in, in preparing for today's show, I, I sat down yesterday and this morning and I read Sidney Powell's, um, the case she filed in Michigan, yeah. um, 150 pages with affidavits and, and you name it. And, and think about this, Brett, the link to the file, this is a court document. This is Sidney Powell's court filed document against the governor of Michigan and the electoral board. I wanted to post the URL to her court filing. So Americans, you know, don't take my word for it. Right. Read the evidence that right. she's filed. The second I posted it, Twitter puts up a census screen on my post and says, we have deemed this link to be damaging. Hang on, this is a court filing and, and you are a social media platform, not a publisher but you are saying a court filing because it's about election fraud in election that your guy, you think won, Biden, must be censored from the American people. And, and, and what are we gonna do about it? Oh, let's have a hearing in the Senate. Are you kidding me? Well, it's either that or I hear, go build your own Twitter. You know, right. I, I, lo I love that one too, you know, from, right. from, from all, my, all my, liber my, my wacky libertarian friends who, you know, it's yeah, because that because that's how you know, that's how you work. That's how a monopoly works. <laughs> that's right. You know, well, that's, how, know, that, that's how they think free markets works. You know, right, you, you mean, right. go go build your own Google. Go build your own Twitter. Yeah, you right. know, no problem. <laughs> so I mean, people are migrating over to over to Parler, which I think is a good thing. But at the same time, I've been saying for years, and and, and you can back me up. You've been saying the same thing. Facebook, Twitter, these are publishers. These are not platforms because they are blatantly and they have been and now they're blatantly editorializing everything including your 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 tweet well, but which was just me forget me, a they're, link. This, they're censoring the president I, I, i'm sorry every day he's he's the president I, I don't care what he says 63 million americans voted for him four years ago now 73 million americans voted for him and you you get to censor him yeah. Then what about the will of the American people, Jack Dorsey? <laughs> AKA Rasputin. Right. <laughs> hey, last question. And this is, and this that's is on. A, that's, a, that's a comic book you got to do. And guys, I got to <laughs> thank uh, Brett and, and Tim and everybody else for the amazing cameos they allowed me to, uh, to, yeah. to, to steal in the, in the Space Force book. But I think the next one has to be a, a little bit of a mini series on, on Jack Rasputin Dorsey. I, I like that idea. I, I, I kind of had an idea I was going to shoot over to you that was going to be uh, maybe little animatics or something. Because we, you and I were talking about video not too long ago as being yeah. kind of the future. And, I, and, I, and I'm with you on that. But, um, you know, one of the things that's on my mind is, let's just say for argument's sake, Trump runs in 2024. I, I mean, and I love the idea and I'll certainly back him. But are they going to allow, aren't they just going to ballot harvest him? you know, out of existence in 2024? They just do this all over again? Look, whatever, whoever's in the White House in the next four years, um, along with sorting out social media, whether it's breaking them up or removing their 230 immunity, whatever it is, 
um, we, we, we have to fix the election. The, the mm -hmm. idea that you can just have mail-in ballots as much as you want, no, we, we, we have to have a push. And that's why, you know, the, the role of your viewers is the key thing. The, these things yeah. are in the control of the states. It is the states that decide and it is the states that have to fix them. So, and, and it's a very simple argument. Every time one ballot is forged or duplicated, or in whichever way, electronically or what have you, you have disenfranchised a human. You, you, have, you have disenfranchised an American citizen because every single fake vote means that it is nullifying a real vote. Mm -hmm. And you have lost the right that Americans have bled and died for. So it has to be understood in that, that deeply constitutional human rights uh, lens that this is, this is an assault on the civil rights of every American and it cannot be allowed to have. How, how is it? Can you explain to me how a billion people, more than a billion people in India, with all its different provinces and counties, every single one of them has voter ID in India, Mexico, that is on the <laughs> cusp of being a failed narco state, has voter ID, but America can't do it. What's wrong with that picture? It's pretty sad, man. <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, they were even talking today in the Arizona hearings about how your, your Venmo account yeah. is more secure than, than, the, than, these, than these Dominion machines uh, because they have a blockchain. And, yeah. you know, honestly, I, I, think, I think your message is right on. I think that the power is with the people and we have to fix the elections. And, you know, you know integrating some kind of blockchain technology into voting you know, if it or just going back to paper ballots, I think there's a lot of options. Paper ballots, there. paper ballots, all the way, yeah. baby. Just go old school, man, and 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 no, no no chads, just just marking, you know, and not using sharpies, but using you know using regular pens and and just marking what, in bubbles. What does it tell you that Dominion, which is registered as a Canadian company, mm -hmm. that Canada doesn't use Dominion, and That's that Canada a great point. Canada uses paper ballots. Does Canada have voter ID as well? I bet they do. I bet they do. <laughs> well, it's crazy, man. Let's, uh, you know, I just keep telling people, keep keep telling people, just keep the faith and stay in the fight. And uh, you know, you know, I think that's your message as well, which I think is is a good one. So, anyway, sadly, we are out of time. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank you for joining me, Seb. I really appreciate it. Um, where where can everyone find you on uh, on the radio and on Twitter and social media? So I'm on Salem Radio, hundreds of stations across the nation. The show's called America First, 3 to 6 Eastern, live uh, every day, Monday to Friday. But the easiest thing is we live stream on YouTube, on Facebook. So just look for my name, Sebastian Gorka, America First. The Twitter feed is Seb Gorka, S-E-B-G-O-R-K-A. And of course, you know, you can download the podcast uh, wherever you get your podcasts from. And we're now on Parler. We're now on Rumble. So if it's out there, we're on it. Fantastic. Uh, I, again, I really appreciate it. Everyone, make sure and check out thepoliticalinsider.com and subscribe to our newsletter so you never miss out on any of our stories from our talented writers. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please like and share this video far and wide because you know YouTube will be suppressing it. Subscribe to the Political Insider channel on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss any of our new videos like this one. And uh, like I said before, everyone keep the faith and stay frosty.